This is Official Nerd Business. Hello nerd boys and girls, welcome back to our programming series where we try and take down Euler problems using Python. Today we have something special, today we're gonna run through two of the Euler problems, namely problems 16 and 17. And the reason we're gonna do this is because they both are kinda peculiar. They're definitely not my, my favorite Euler challenges up to, um, up to now. They're especially the first one, we're gonna kick off at number 16, which is particularly simple. As usual, I have created uh, the template files uh, by copying in uh, the description for project Euler, adding the title, adding a, a parameter with a default value and having this boilerplate code for running this. So let's kick off with number 16, power digit sum. 2 to the power of 15 is 32,000 and change and the sum of its digits is 3 to 7, 6, 8 makes 26. What is the sum of the digits of the number 2 to the 1000th? To solve this I'm not gon even going to create an attempt. This is pathetically simple. Um, I do however parameterize d1000 so we get any number. And we want to see what 2 to the power of our exponent looks like. Um, uh, this gives us a number. A uh, very big number in this case. Um, if you plug in 1000, I have the test case of 15 in this program, and if you run it through our main Pi, uh, the default parameter here will kick in, and it will be 1000. So if we were to um, do this simply uh, and run this file, we'd get the answer from the example here. Now we want to break this into digits. Which this now is. Then we want to uh, sum each digit, but for that we need this to be ints again because now we've converted this into um, into strings. So we are going to use this one again. And this needs to explicitly be a list. Now I'm just gonna check if this runs. Usually a string can be treated like it is a list of itself and sometimes these types of functions don't play nice together this time it works. Uh, so we get this list so if we slap a sum function around this we get 26 as in the example. Now if we run it through main by which is here and we run this instead. We get the list of programs that we have. Um, as you can see, the boilerplate for 17 is already in here as well. We want to run number 16 with the default parameter of 1000. It gives us 1366 as an answer. And I can tell you, if you enter 1366 over at projecteuler.net for problem number 16, you will get a green check mark. So that's it for problem 16. There's no optimizing here. There's Really, either there's nothing or I am missing the point. But it really is that simple. So we go on to problem number 17. And 17, we will read the description. A number letter counts. Um, if the numbers 1, 2, 5 are written out in words 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then there are 3 and 3 and 5 and 4 and 4 and 19 letters used in total. If all the numbers from 1 to 1000, inclusive, were written down in words, how many letters will we use? And then there's a certain side note about how to write the numbers, uh, not counting spaces, adding ands if we have uh, 342, etc. Not counting the hyphens as well. Um, as you can tell from the description, or as you maybe can tell from the description, this is a very fiddly problem. It doesn't really require math because all we're doing is adding things. This is really all the math we're gonna see. 
but it does take a bit of programming and it takes a bit of fiddly programming at that because we have to um, uh, we have to track certain edge cases in this uh, in this case. So let's see what happens. Uh, I'm going to create a attempt number one function with a certain n in here, uh, where n is uh, also defined as a parameter here. Um, numbers up to n, so how many numbers are we going to write out? I uh, could also uh, create a lower bound and upper bound for these. Um, I'm, I'm going to suppose we're going to start at one at all times, as we do in the example and in the extended. Uh, challenge. So if we take into account uh, this bit and then we want to run temp1 here for the given value. Uh, wait, this should be an n and not an e. I have to copy this in from problem number 16 as you might see. Um, I'm going to start with 5 in this one uh, to check this example a bit later on. And I've already worked this one out in a uh, bit of a doodle file. Um, I'm going to use several functions to solve this. Um, the first function here will be a, uh, a function that specifically um, takes one number and converts it into a word list. So the return value for this function is going to be something like... Um, One hundred and thirty-two would look, look something like this. It will be a um, oh, excuse me. It should be a comma. Uh, this is going to be a list of words, um, strings. So they should all be in quotation marks. Um, but you get the drift. And by returning a list with all of the items on it, we can um, use a second function to either pretty print them. Um, This function uh, will um, join the list it gets into a string. It'll also take a delimiter. Um, so when this um, when this gets its list of words, say for instance, it gets this, uh, then it will um, join them all together using the delimiter which is default set to absolutely nothing so this would compress 132 to one blob of letters without spaces or anything in between without hyphens and we can go and count that and if we do that then uh, we would get the correct answer and uh, we would get the answer we're looking for um, but now to fill this in uh, well, we will simply need to enter all the the words we want to use to describe our uh, our numbers with. Um, so let's start with that. Uh, first off, I want a list with all of the unique numbers we're gonna um, we're gonna indicate. So the ones, which are familiar zero. I've included zero. We will never fully write out zero, but uh, it is in the zeroth spot of the array, which is important. One is in the uh, at index 1 in the array, 2 is at index 2 in the array, etc. So that's important. And as you can see, it's simply all of the numbers written out. And I've extended this a bit beyond 9, taking along 10 and 11, because uh, up to, but not including 20, so up to 19, um, the, the numbers form a certain, are in fact not as structured as the numbers above 20, 21, 33, uh, 67 um, take your pick every number above 20 has the same structure with the the tens denominator and then uh, a number from the ones the top row of the ones but 15 does not and 13 definitely doesn't uh, less said about 11 and 12 the better so those are um, also explicitly defined in the ones bit here and then there's the tens, which are uh, kind of funky. Um, this array leaves two blank spots, giving uh, making 20 to sit at the 
array index number 2, 30 at array index number 3, etc. 40, 50, 60, all the way up to 90. And then in a separate list, because these are slightly less fiddly than the others and we are not concerned with anything above 1000, so not 10,000 or 100,000, um, are the other magnitudes. So speaking of magnitudes, um, when I say magnitude I mean the following, uh, I will simply look at the number 1000 and say this is magnitude 4 because it has 4 digits and um, a little later on we will see uh, numbers like this where um, this is at magnitude 3 when we look through it this is at magnitude 2 and this is at magnitude 1 uh, so that's that's orders of magnitudes as in 10 to the power this would be your order of magnitude I'm off by one compared to the tens bit by the way um, but that's fine it's not for actual math it's just for looking up things in arrays it's it's a fiddly programmer thingy now for um, ease of access um, when we are looking at a given number um, we don't want to have a complicated if then else looking at which one of these lists we need to pick a, uh, a word from but instead of that we are going to roll this all into uh, into one array and this all text array combines all of the text from the ones and the tens and the other magnitudes into one single list and this one list will um, it, it's in fact a list of lists uh, with the uh, array index corresponding to a particular magnitude Now the other magnitudes are appended to this list in uh, using the extend function so they are um, the, the end result here is first the blank um, index for magnitude 0 which doesn't exist for our problem here. Uh, then we have a list with the 1, the 2 etc then we have a a list for magnitude where the actual number at magnitude 2, so if we look at uh, the number uh, 67 for instance, then the 6 will, uh, the fact that it has two numbers will make our code look at the uh, second list. In the uh, old text array, or at position number 2, so it's the third list because the array is zero indexed and we compensate for that by using this empty blank spot at the top and then it uses the value of its first digit to actually look at this list with its um, two blank spots then the 20 then the etc etc until it hits the 60 then etc etc for other numbers so having this number in here it will look at magnitude number two which is the spotted index number two in the old text list and then within that list it will search for position number six and we'll use a slightly different code for looking at the hundreds and thousands where um, we will not we don't have sublists again we will just simply take this and whatever um, uh, for instance if we look at 567 and then this number is three digits long so we end up at the um, old text array position number three and then this value again is looked up in this particular array and then appended to it so 500 etc etc so that's how the old texts work and that is why we instead of appending a list we extend so this um, Instead of adding this entire list to the end of, of the array, it uh, it adds the elements that are in this list to the end of this array. There is a subtle difference. 
Now this is going to return a list. So we're going to initialize our return value to being a blank list. And eventually we want to return this list. But we need to do some stuff in between. Believe it or not. Uh, this function is going to work recursively. So it's going to... Uh, if, if this... If this function reaches a zero, it will start returning itself, bottom to top. And if it doesn't reach a zero yet, it will call itself with a new argument. Um, once again, if we look at 365, and the first call to this function will resolve 300 as two separate words, and it will leave 65 and put that into a new call to number to word list. And then the second call will take that 65, process the 60 from that bit, and leave us with 5. So the 5 will once again be thrown into this function. And eventually uh, the 5 will resolve to a 0. And it will return 5. Um, 65 still remembered that it had, zero, uh, had 60 and still needed to process a little bit. So now it gets to return value for processing and appends that to 60, giving us 65. That again is returned to the function that uh, processed 300 and still noticed it had something left to do. Uh, so that gets appended to 300 and the whole thing returns 365. Um, so we need, to, uh, we need to have a value to put into our second function call and that's new n and uh, we need to stop uh, calling ourselves and start returning things when this reaches zero. So let's assume that it will reach zero until we tell our program to treat it any differently. Um, now, as said before, when we look at the the ones case, so any number smaller than 20, if something is thrown into this function which is below 20, so it, it can't be zero because then we've started returning things already, uh, but if it's anything above 0 but below 20, we simply want to um, pick the one number from our ones list or from our old text at magnitude 1 slash this index, uh, whatever number we got. So if we got a 19, we simply look into this list at position 19 and give back 19. And if we got a 7, we will simply look into this list at position 7. And if we got anything bigger than that, we need to do something different. So we, are, uh, we have a list here, and we simply uh, append the element 7 to this. So if we got a 7, our return value will look like this. And we will return that. But if it is greater than 20 we need to do a whole lot of other things and uh, we need a couple of values um, to make this work properly so we want the first if, if we got a 365 it's, it's kind of a nice example I guess um, we want to create 300 and we want to leave 65 to be processed at some later time so we want this 3. So that's what's happening here. I, uh, we, we cast the value we get to string because that allows us to simply take one character from it and it allows us to take a look at how long this number is, how many characters are in it or how many digits in, in case of number of course. Uh, so that's what we do here. Uh, we take the numerical value of the first character by simply casting it to string first. Here, here we make a string out of it. Here we take the first character off that string and turn it back into an int. So our x value now is 3 and this tells us that we are talking about the hundreds. Now we know that we can do this little bit uh, which sets the new n. As said before we have new n here which is def by default set to 0 but we want to keep 65 for the next call. Um, there's actually several ways to do this. I've chosen, instead of a string manipulation thingy, I've chosen the um, method of taking n. So 365 will be 
take the 3 we, uh, we took off, multiply that by 10 to the power of our magnitude minus 1, as said before, um, the way I determine the magnitudes here is off by 1 compared to uh, powers of 10. So here we get, uh, for magnitude 3, we get 10 to the second, which is 100, um, and we took the, th the numerical value for 3 here, so we have a 300, which we are going to construct verbally, um, and we have our 365 in N, so new N is now 65. And with that, we are in a moment going to call, um, in fact, let's take care of that right now. Um, there we go. We're going to take a look at some other cases in this particular bit in a second, but here is the code that if new n still has a value greater than zero, because if, if this was, if we got the actual number 300, then um, this would subtract 300 from 300, in which case, uh, which would indicate that we were done here. We don't need to put anything else behind it. And that would leave new n at 0, although we did calculate it, it just, uh, the, the sum of the formula would end at 0. And if new n is greater than 0, then we want to still manipulate the list of items that we add. But if it is 0 itself, then we don't want to call ourselves and we simply want to start returning things. Now another special bit here, um, if we still have that 65 from our 365 then we uh, we call our number to word list function with that 65 as a parameter And whatever uh, result we get from that, we want to add to uh, our return value, our already prepared to return values of the 300. And that particular case, if we have the hundreds column and we start appending uh, the the tens to it, then we want to add in an and. And this we can see pretty clearly if we take a look at the example here, 342. The ends are counted, the spaces and the hyphens are not. So we need that. And it's simply appended as all the other word parts are to a list. Uh, note also that I'm using extend here instead of append because this itself for 65 would return a list with a 60 and a 5 in it. And if I were to use append here, then we would get a bit of a skewed array where uh, two elements would be 300 and second element would be and, and then the third element would be a list with 60 and 5 in it. And we don't want a sublist in it, we simply want all the items to be in one list without any uh, differences in depth in that list. So we extend whatever we get from this instead of appending. Again, so difference, but it does matter a lot in the eventual uh, functionality of it all. So there is that. Now what we still need to do, um, this takes care of everything uh, in the 20s, this takes uh, below 20, this does basically everything else. Uh, except actually picking the word value, so this uh, keeps track of uh, calling the, its own function by determining the next uh, value for the new end parameter. Uh, but here is a bit that does the rest. And there we go. So if our magnitude is greater than 2, in fact, let's take a look at uh, magnitude exactly 2 first to see what we solve here and then come back to what we are not solving yet. Uh, this jumps um, to our list of tens because that's the uh, in all text. As you can see, um, we are looking at all text at a given magnitude. 
and it is two here so we are looking at array index number two here zero one two so that's the list of tens and let's see and within that list of tens we are looking at whatever value x has so for 65 if we if we take that example again uh, we would with this code we x would be six at this point so we are looking at array index number six in our uh, tens section so that would yield 60 which gets appended to whatever return value we have and to that return value then is appended the same call with 5 and 5 is called here we get this we append this new n remains 0 because we never hit a bit that change new n and we'd return 5 to here we already said if we had 60 so we're now extending that list with a5 and returning that now we get to the 300 bit etc and that's how this function rolls back up and if we do have that 300 so if our magnitude is greater than 2 then we insert a uh, two elements into our list first off we add the numerical value 3 here so we take a look at the ones for 3 or if it were 465 for 4 etc and then we simply take the uh, text from all text at our uh, magnitude position so this list as said before has a um, got extended where element number three simply is hundreds where element number four is thousand and so we would get um, eventually we would once get element number four here and this is easily extendable for ten thousand or hundred thousand or a million or etc but we don't need to do that right now um, so yeah then we we get the description for uh, for whatever magnitude we're in prepended by however many of that particular magnitude we would have so that's basically the code that gives us a list of words this is the code that uh, creates a string out of that so now it's time to um, put it all together here in the tip number one um, we're gonna test run this with uh, with five so I guess we could say um, for whatever variable we want i in range 1 to n plus 1 because we want this boundary to be inclusive and range is exclusive we add one plus a little bit, little bit. Um, let's say we want to temporarily store whatever strings we get here so results is this uh, and we want our i to be in here and then you are going to simply return this and this should um, This should print. Uh, wait, we are still executing main. I don't want to execute main at this point. I want to execute this file on its own. So that's a different starting code. As you can see, results right now is a list of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 because I've asked it to run all the way up to 5. If we were to make 25 out of this, um, we would get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. As you can see here 21 etc all the way up to 25 i hope that's still on screen by the way um there are no spaces between 21 or, or hyphens or anything because uh, this particular function doesn't allow for that if we were to add a delimiter here like so and I would run this 
all the way up to I guess 35. Then you can see that the different parts of the words are separated by a space because I've now asked it to add a space instead of its default parameter of not having a space, of having nothing in between the words. So I'm going to go back to that functionality because we are interested in the length of the numbers without spaces, hyphens, etc. Um, so let's not return results, but Uh, now we convert the array of results into an array of integers holding uh, the length of each number and if we were to return that for instance going all the way up to 35 we get 1 has two, is 3 letters, 2 has 3 letters 3 itself is 5 letters, 4 is 4 letters, 5 has 4 letters, etc. So as you can see this properly calculates um, how many uh, characters are each in written number. Um, going back to the example of 5, we should get an answer of 19 letters used. Uh, so if we would return the sum of s, taking the sum of all of these numbers together, would yield 19. This seems to work. Now, for the big test, we want to run number 17. Uh, and we want to use the default value. And as you can see, we get the answer of 21,124 digits used to write out, or characters used, to write out all the numbers from 1 up to 1,000. This answer, once again, is correct. If you ent enter this over at Project Euler, you will get the green check mark. Um, take away from problem number 17, uh, this really shows you how to deal with edge cases, like this particular one and fiddly little bits like this particular one. So if we are switching from the hundreds into the tens, then we want to add an end, but only if there still is something left behind the hundreds. So we don't get 300 and, and then later decide that uh, the number itself was 300, so we don't need to actually add anything more to it. Um, as I said before, it's, it's not very mathematical, it's really pretty fiddly and it's good really to um, it's good to show some things in programming it's uh, most project Euler problems are combined math and programming and as we could see here it misses its mark a little bit on both counts I guess studying this a little bit to see what every little bit does is kind of interesting for programming but mathematically there's really nothing here um, and again here I mean, this is the most mathematical bit in the entire thing, and we can all add numbers. Um, so this just goes to show how to break down a problem of this complexity um, with the happy coincidence that the English language is pretty regular in how it describes numbers, so that's good. Um, so yeah, we've, we've seen how we can put this into a certain structure, and I've taken these, these special... Um, the opportunity to show a little bit how to do this recursively by calling itself with a new parameter until it uh, completes its task and start returning things back to top. So I hope you're still with me here. I, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this um, and I will see you again for problem number 18. Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear, or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you!
next time.